Now I would like to uh, move on to some general question about the U.S. stock market, if you don't sure. mind. Um, as we are all aware, the U.S. stock market has been very hot this year, and uh, uh, most of the heat is coming from AI booms, artificial intelligence. So um, uh, what do you think about this current AI craze? Um, is it like a dot-com bubble, or is it uh, different this time? Uh, what is your feeling? Uh, I, you know, I think... Um, as we had the introduction, uh, really going back in history, if you look at the introduction of the radio or the TV or mobile phones or the internet, I think people will view AI in the same spectrum as other key technologies that have come along historically. And what tends to happen is there are a number of companies that can do incredibly well in a very short period just because of their involvement with mm -hmm. this sector. Mm -hmm. And investors have to be very careful. Um, when the automobile came along, uh, there were well over 100 companies that just supplied headlights for automobiles. Mm -hmm. And many of their stocks skyrocketed and all they were doing was providing headlights. Um, and you just have to sort of be involved in a field and sometimes people will invest. And I think investors have to be very careful. So I anticipate that artificial intelligence will play a very big part in the roles of companies and individuals. But as an investor, uh, I want to make sure that I'm looking at fundamentals and I want to make sure that that company indeed has growth, has value, has profitability. And by staying disciplined and looking at those metrics and companies that don't um, trade have a valuation framework that is unjustifiable mm. or irrational exuberance, if they stay disciplined, they'll be able to identify companies that are in artificial intelligence or supply companies with artificial intelligence that will be good long-term investments. So that's how I would advise people. Uh, in our era today, we have some very big technology companies. And I often refer to those as the megatech companies. And those are actually the stocks that have done very well this year. The broader market has not done as well as our, our five megatech stocks. Mm -hmm. And there are two reasons why the megatech stocks have done well. One I mentioned earlier, there's been a lot of uncertainty this year over inflation and interest rates. So investors have been defensive and they've gone into these megatech stocks. Mm -hmm. But- the megatech stocks are also very involved with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So people have been investing in those stocks because they are dominant players in the world of artificial intelligence. The benefit to some of these megatech stocks is since their companies are so broad and so diverse that even if artificial intelligence is you know, a very small part, they have earnings that come from other products mm -hmm. that will sort of help uh, investors along the way. Now, the the issue with that is you're not going to find a company that's going to go up 10 times. You're just not going to see that with a megatech stock. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, we're, we, I was watching CNBC yesterday, and a lot of people are starting to refer to Apple almost as a company that in a few years will be similar to Procter & Gamble or Clorox. And those are companies that like provide detergents and soaps in the United States because their products are becoming such a staple to everyday life mm. that the companies will no longer be able to like provide the same return that they did if you invested in them 10 or 15 years ago. Mm. So investors are going to search for smaller companies that are involved in AI. And I think that's a very wise thing to do because you can have uh, really some generous returns. But I would suggest again, using the quant system to evaluate those companies to make sure that the valuation framework is not out of control. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't want to buy uh, a company that has a PE multiple of 300 times mm -hmm. when the rest of the sector only has a PE multiple of 20 times. You don't want to buy a company that actually has no growth, but uses the, world that's, the word that's artificial intelligence, or two words, I should say. Uh, th that is a common trap that people can fall into 
they'll just hear the the buzzword artificial intelligence, so they'll want to invest in it. The benefit of the quant system is it actually measures a company. So uh, I'll share the screen again, and uh, I'll uh, bring up uh, two of the stocks. One is uh, SMCI, as I mentioned uh, before, and I actually wrote an article not too long ago called yeah. uh, AI Disrupts Industries, and I gave three tech stocks to buy that use AI. Um, one of them was SMCI, which provides the uh, storage. Uh, CRM, people may, they know that company as Salesforce. And Salesforce, uh, and I'll click on that stock. And you can see year to date, uh, the stock has done very well. We have a quant strong buy. Um, the stock is a 56% year to date. Um, and Salesforce actually uses, and you can see, you know, one of the top news stories and one of the top contributor stories is um, AI. So here in this article, Salesforce generative AI is not its friend, mm -hmm. but they do use AI. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really big software company and artificial intelligence is going to play a future in it. So what we wanted to do was bring forward companies that are using artificial intelligence um, and investors will be able to benefit. But these are companies that also have a decent valuation framework. They're companies that actually have growth. Um, if you were to look up companies that were just like pure AI and say you clicked on growth, you would probably find a situation where there's very, very little growth. Um, you know, th there are a number of stocks that you'll bring up here and you'll see actually no grades for. Mm -hmm. And you'll often see that with biotech companies or technology companies that are new to a space and they don't actually have revenue or earnings yet. So you'll see no grade there. And we try to play it safe. We want to be involved with artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that the company actually has growth and has a decent value. So um, uh, going back to my uh, original question, do you see any difference between dot-com bubble and AI boom? Is it different? Uh, I, I think artificial intelligence is going to be, yeah, I um, it's going to be a big player. So as the internet has been a, a big player in people's lives, and really the dot-com bubble was sort of a convergence of internet and mobile phones at the same time mm -hmm. and networking. So that's what we had during the the dot com bubble. You sort of had three different technologies converging at the same time with the internet, mobile phones, and networking. Um, I see artificial intelligence as uh, being in its infancy, mm -hmm. even though it's been around for a number of years. It's now coming out in a format where individuals can use it and businesses can use it. So it's going to be a really big player. I, I look at it very different than something like a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. uh, part of cryptocurrency, is, it was the ability to use blockchain and the cloud. But with artificial intelligence, this is something that will, people will be able to use every single day, multiple times a day. I and see. companies will become more efficient and more productive. And individuals will become more efficient and productive as well through the use of artificial intelligence. So it's, I think it's going to be as big I think there will be companies that could be similar to the dot-com error, but by having such big mega tech companies, um, they're going to be acquiring a lot of these smaller players right away so mm -hmm. they can get that intellectual property into their own companies. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't necessarily have during the dot-com bubble mega tech companies the way that you do today. So the mega tech companies want to buy up anything that has strong potential and I think that will sort of help eliminate a little bit of the risk of the overall market. So I think it'll be a major player. Um, I'm not expecting that we'll have a huge, huge rise in valuations. Um, and I think investors are a lot smarter today than they were during the dot-com bubble as well. Mm, sure. Yes, uh, well understood. Thank you. Um, my last question would be... Um... Uh, your general advice to the investors. Uh, what I can see as a uh, YouTuber uh, talking about the U.S. stock every day, there are certain concern because the people have been uh, suffering for a long time from bear market. Bear market was quite long, 
like over yes. one year, especially if you were investing in tech stocks, it was almost two year bear market. And then yes. people lost a lot of confidence um, in US market. And now uh, starting from this year, uh, the, the market was very strong. The many people have recovered their return. And then uh, as soon as they recover, they are thinking about leaving the market. Like, uh, okay, my my uh, portfolio is now zero, <laughs> not minus anymore. Should I sell everything and leave the market? Something like that. Um, what what would you like to say to those uh, investors who do not have uh, enough experience, who just joined maybe a couple of years ago, who who suffered a lot from last two years bear market? What is your general yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. And um, my advice would be, to as investors to stay very disciplined and to try to participate in the market almost on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about the bull market. Don't worry about the bear market. Because the truth of the matter is, if people were buying during the bear market, they've done exceptionally well. So if you bought those technology stocks um, that were getting crushed a year ago, you've had an amazing return over a six month period. So a bear market can actually be one of your best investment opportunities. Um, so if you just stay disciplined and ignore the bull market, bear market, ignore if like the portfolio is down a lot or up a lot and just stay disciplined, continue to try and uh, to find good investment ideas or stocks that you like that have good fundamentals and just keep chipping away at it every single month, you know, or, you know, once every four months, I think you will do immensely well over the long haul. Mm -hmm. So my guidance is don't worry about the bull market or bear market. Um, stay true to an investment discipline. Mm -hmm. And that is how you will create generational wealth. Okay, great. So um, if I may just summarize, stay invested and don't worry about the macro, just focus on the companies. Just focus on the companies because really the, the amazing thing is um, the people who do incredibly well are the ones who buy when the market's at its worst. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like when you, it's it's the hardest to do because everything looks so awful. And, you know, if you went back to last June um, where the market had been selling off a lot, um, that was one of the best times to buy. Because um, the market has done very, very well since last June. And as you mentioned earlier, the technology stocks got completely crushed in 2022. Mm -hmm. But if you stayed true to that investment discipline, you've done incredibly well yes. because you had the courage uh, to stay strong to your conviction and continue to buy during uh, no matter what the environment is. So you always want to stay invested and you want to stay disciplined with it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the uh, encouraging message, Stephen. Okay, today, uh, uh, thank you for everything. Uh, we have learned a lot about uh, uh, Seeking Alpha quantity system, quantity evaluation, and also thank you for sharing your general advice about the stock market and investment. It has been a fantastic uh, time uh, together with you. It has been a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me on your channel. Hopefully, uh, that we will uh, have uh, another opportunity to invite you back to uh, the Bijon Center. In the Thank you. I, wel I welcome that. Great. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, you too. Thank Bye -bye. you. Stay healthy. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> it's sunny, no nuts. Stephen Kress, creator of Seeking Alpha's stock picking system. Seeking Alpha, all you need to know about investing in top stocks or in anything else. Seeking Alpha, be a better investor.